Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 479. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 478 to 479. Hey, we're going to do a reverse two-way lookup. We have day labels up here, jobs here, and then we've put people's name on the inside of the table. Notice that there's lots of duplicates. Our goal is to build a little table like this so we have Sue's name and a formula will say day two job one is the first job, day two job three is the second, day three job one is the third. And there's a fourth one too also here. Now when our formula extracts they have to extract um, look up here and extract, it has to extract the column header first and then the row header. So day two, both of these items get returned before any any of them. Day two, and then within the days, the obviously the first, the job two will come before job three. And sure enough, that's how we see it right here. So if we type um, Fred's name here, for example, and then type Fred down here, the name should show up. And notice we have lots of duplicates, so then there those will be returned. So this is a formula for reverse two-way lookup that can handle duplicates, and the it will return the day first and then the job second. Now, I've done other videos on reverse two-way lookup. Here are some of them. These videos are not as robust as this one. This one is going to handle duplicates. And th this formula comes from uh, Don Quixote and PGC01 at the Mr. Excel message board. These posts are what I'm basing this formula on. This uh, formula is not exactly the same as these, but all the ideas came from these guys. Just incredible. All right, let's uh, start this out. Ultimately, uh, since we're trying to return this column first and we have a specific order in the way we want things to be placed, and because we have duplicates, we're going to have to, here's the table, right? We could say is chin equal to any of these, and we'll get three trues and falses. Well, we need to somehow have a table with something in there that says exactly what column first and what row this is. So that's kind of the, the, the bulk of this um, trick here is going to be how do we get a table of numbers that will tell us for any given true we get from the name what the the column and row is. We're going to start off with small and we're going to say if because the logical uh, table of trues and falses will look all through there and I'm going to hit my F4 key because that will be copied everywhere when that's equal to whatever this name is in this schedule down here and we'll lock this because we're displaying uh, the return values in columns we need to lock it in the column so we can see Chin's name as the formula moves that way. Now those are the trues and falses, comma. Now the rest of this value of true we're actually going to do something pretty clever here. We're going to take the rows and the columns and add them together to get a single number in any one of these uh, cells that will tell us what the column and row is. And the way we're going to do that is open parentheses and then we'll use the column function just as we've seen so many times before. Column will give us 2, 3, etc., but that won't work because we want 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll have to subtract column of this one. That'll give us for the first entry b is 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0, but that won't work, so we'll add 1. And you always want to, uh, the reason people do this construction is that means this formula is looking exactly part of this schedule. So if you insert rows before or below or whatever, the formula is robust and will work. All right, so close parentheses on that. Now that'll give us one, two, three, four. You could even highlight this and hit the F9 key and see. But what we really want is because we want this strange number that will have a column number at the beginning and a row number at the end. Control Z. I'm going to multiply this times 10 caret 5, just as uh, PGC01 did in his formula. And a number so big, well, there's lots of columns and rows, so potentially the number could get uh, pretty, uh, it needs to be big enough to accommodate that. Now, what if I hit F9 here? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Well, that doesn't do us much good. We really need this number to somehow sy symbolize or represent row and column. And all it's representing right now is column. Control-Z, no problem. What are we going to do? We're going to add to it 
row, the same construction but with these row, F4 minus row of this one right here, F4 plus 1. Now, I'm going to put some parentheses around this. You don't need to. When I ran formula evaluator, it was helpful to see that uh, all of this added before uh, it went on and did all added that all together and you could see a single number. But watch this. What is this going to do? Right here, if I hit the F9 key, it gives me a table that's exactly the same. Commas are columns and semicolons are rows. So look, 1, 2, 3, 4, next row. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are, there's a table of values the same size as the table we're going to get from our true falses in this part. The first number is row, I'm sorry, column, row. This is the second column, first row, third column, first row, fourth column, first row. So boom, 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 boom. Exactly what we are going to need. Then you go down to the next one. Oh, it's back to the first column again, second row, second column, second row, etc. Control Z on that. Now, if I uh, put a close parenthesis, you can see down here, value of true, we don't need the value of false, and highlight this if, then the, the logical test for the name, there'll only be three of them because we're looking at chin, right? So F9. And sure enough, we get 1, 2, 3, exactly what we want. 4, 2 is fourth column, second row. 3, 4 is third column, fourth row. 4, 4 is fourth column, fourth row. Uh, but those numbers themselves are not going to help us. I'm going to Control-Z. And we're using the small, so we need to have a number incrementer as we go this way to pull the first smallest, second smallest. So we columns, and I'm sitting in C11, so I'm going to type dollar sign C11, C11. I'm going to just going to control, uh, close parentheses and control, shift, enter. Control, shift, enter, because it's an array, and just show you. Is that not awesome? Column row, column row, column row. So in one number, meeting the same shape and size of the true and false is generated by this name, will give us. So the only trick is how do we extract the three and use that in index for column number, and four and use that in index for row number. We'll do the, how about we do the column number first? Well, what happens if we divide this number right here? by this same 10 times 10 time caret 5. So here we multiply it. Now we're dividing. Let's just control shift enter. No way. Now we have column row. So the row part is the decimal. The column part is the uh, integer there. So can't we just use the int? The integer will take the integer part and leave the um, always going down, taking the uh, leaving the decimal not showing. Boom! Just like that, we have our row number. If I copy it down to here, we'll get rid of those nums later. You can see for Sue, we have a two, two, three, three, which for column is exactly right. Two, two, three, three. Now this small part, including the all the way to the end, just not the end. I'm going to copy that because we're going to use that same uh, huge part of that formula to get the row number. But we can't use int because remember it was a decimal that was uh, thrown into the cell, right? So how do we get that decimal part now? Well, if mod function, well, what if we divide this number by 1? 3 divided by 1, right, is 3 remainder 0.0004. So we can use the mod function, which that's what it does. The mod function gives us the remainder. So there's the number. The divisor will come to the end, comma, divisor. What is it? 1. So now it gives us that ridiculously small number. We can just simply multiply it times that number, 10 caret 5. Control shift enter. And so now we have our uh, numbers for row. Now we need to combine, we're going to have to put both of these formula parts into indexes and then concatenate them in one cell. I'm going to, um, if you don't know how, if you don't have clipboard turned on, 
there's clipboard and you should go down to options if you want you can turn in 2007 CC control CC will copy and open up the clipboard I use this trick all the time for big formulas so watch this I'm gonna copy the int control CC in earlier versions control CC just works 2007 you have to turn it on in that options button I'm gonna come up here and then control CC so the int will be for the column and the mod will be for the row. Okay, so I'm just going to come here and let's try index. Index is a lookup function. I need to look up first the column header. So I'm going to highlight those in F4, comma, and row number. Well, we need a column number, right? Column. But guess what? If all you give it is columns, B, C, D, E, and you put a column number in for a row, index knows what to do. So I'm going to put int. Close parentheses. Control Shift Enter, and now you can see that our formula would work for uh, some days, right? So we've extracted the column part, it, part of it. So for chin, day three right there day four day four day four day four now let's um, put this into edit mode and this form is going to keep getting bigger I can actually just come here and we need to concatenate so I'm going to ampersand which joins and then we need a comma so double quote comma space double quote ampersand index now I don't need the column headers I need the row headers F4 to lock it And now comma, what's the row number? It's this mod piece. So the big part was doing the small right. Remember the int and the mod just use the small. So if you really want to study this formula, you study that small and then the, 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 the mod, the int, and the index are less hard. At least they were for me as I tried to figure this out. All right, so we uh, close parentheses on the index. Now that will work, but we're going to get some errors. Control Shift Enter. And then we have to do some formula adjustment to, to uh, not show the num error and not show this down here. But there it is. It should be uh, day three, job four for chin. Day four, job two. Day four, num four for uh, Sue. Day two, 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 three. Exactly right. Now, what are the things that are getting in the way? We have a uh, num from the fact that that columns is delivering a four there and there's no fourth value. And we also have some values down here we don't want. So this, if this is blank, we need to turn it off. And if columns is greater than uh, this, we need to turn it, uh, have blank show up instead of the formula. This little columns things we are going to use, Control C. So I'm going to put it into edit mode and come to the beginning if. And you notice there's two conditions. Is columns, great, is columns greater than this? And is this blank? So I'm going to use the or. Because either one of these three things, if they turn out to be true, then we need a blank. So columns, when that's greater than this, count. And I'm going to uh, F4 till it's the column is locked. That's the first test, comma. And the second test is, oh, if that space right there locked with the column is equal to blank, then what do we want? Well, we have to close parentheses, two separate logical tests on the or. Either one of those come out true. What do we want? Comma. And then there's the uh, if. The true value will be comma, double quote, blank. Uh, comma, and then that big thing at the end is what we'll use if it's false. Close parentheses on the end, Control Shift Enter, and then copy this over. Now, um, so there it is job day two, job two, day two, job three. Uh, day three, job one for Sue. Uh, that formula looks good. I think that's the biggest formula I've ever done here. Uh, I just can't believe sometimes how uh, lucky I am to be hanging out at the Mr. Excel message board learning some just amazing things. And really, the coolest thing was that this whole columns plus rows to invent a number that uh, would show both the column reference and the row reference. All right, we'll see you next trick.